I am off to cruise the Broughton Archipelago in BC in a 37 foot boat for five weeks. With my aunt and uncle. With her aunt and uncle. <laughs> and I have to stay here and work and take care of the cats. Poor Jill. And Charles is going to film himself. So you'll get to see his projects and his adventures. Maybe Sharon will film me. <laughs> Hi, Charles. Welcome Hello. to the Pacific Northwest. Welcome home. Good to be home. <laughs> so, where have you been for the last five weeks? I have been boating on the coast of British Columbia. All up and down between... Kind of it's the called the Broughton Archipelago. There's a marine park up there. It's between basically the mainland of BC and Vancouver Island. It's a very large, expansive area of beautiful, wild fjords. I've seen pictures of like Norway and I think a lot of it looks very similar. I mean it's high mountains on both sides of a channel and very very pretty. The boat we were on is Jill's aunt and uncle's boat. Um, it's a 36 foot saber line. Kind of a, it's a, they call it a fast trawler although we still cruised very slowly, 8 to 10 knots usually. But the boat's capable of 20 plus but we cruised very slowly and used very little fuel and enjoyed the scenery. We started in the van in Tacoma, drove up through Vancouver, took a ferry across, and then we started our boat trip at Pender Harbor, which is right there. And then this white line traces everywhere the boat actually went. This does not include our dinghy excursions and come back down and along the east coast of Vancouver through the Gulf Islands, San Juan Islands, back down to Tacoma. The thing that made me most excited was seeing the wildlife. He's a long way from shore. My big desire when I first decided to go on this trip was to see orcas and I did end up seeing some and it was exciting. Charles, what are you looking at? <laughs> looking at a bunch of whale watching boats that found some orcas. <laughs> now I'm going to try to get some video. Okay, good luck. There we go. Oh man, they're getting a great view. Right next to them. Oh my goodness. But I have to say probably surprisingly even more exciting to me was seeing a pod of like a hundred white-sided dolphins. White-sided. Well, I've been neutral. They're swimming under us. They're all around us. And being right in the middle of them, watching them go under the boat jumping that 
seemed to get my heart rate up more than seeing the orcas did. Hi, Joe. We're almost to the Malibu Rapids. We're going to Chatterbox Falls. Went through probably half a dozen rapids that John planned just right. So anytime we came through a rapids, we tried to hit it right around slack. So there's very little current going in and out. For people going to this part of the world, I would definitely not miss Chatterbox Falls. It's a long haul up in there and that's the only thing it's up at the end of it, but it's worth it. We anchored there for two or three nights and John and I went on a hike which was probably the most strenuous but the most beautiful hike that I've ever done. It was basically up a mountain, very, very steep. There were places where they had actually installed ropes to help pull yourself up the mountain. And it took us two hours to get to where we were going. And it was another waterfall and an old trapper's cabin at the top. Chatterbox Falls was also one of the only places that I actually went swimming in the ocean. Getting ready to swim to the waterfall. <laughs> Have fun, meet you there. Alrighty. He made it to the falls. <laughs> few projects that John wanted to get, well, John and his partner wanted to get done to the boat. One was to add an AC outlet up on the flybridge so they could plug in like their phones or iPads for navigation. What are you working on, Charles? Trying to fish wires from the flybridge down to the breaker panel. One will be for an AC outlet in the flybridge and the others will be for possible future solar array. Ooh, nice. What are you doing, Charles? <laughs> I am terminating the wire for the AC outlet up at the flybridge. So I've got the AC outlet at the top terminated to a circuit breaker down here. So we just need to pull that back up and cut our hole for the outlet in the flybridge. And right now we can try to route our DC wires to the engine room. Just a little rain, but let's see where Charles went. Covers on. He's still working. Okay, you want to pull the red and white down a little more? Red and black on it. Okay, hold up. Standing out in the rain filming me? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get all the action. Okay. Here he comes. Yeah. I think that's pretty 
terminated so we don't All right, now we're crawling in the engine room. This is for the future solar panels. And it's got to go in the engine room somewhere. You got a clothesline in the engine room? Yeah, I sent it. <laughs> so we're looking for a spot for a charge controller. We're looking for a spot to take these wires through. Drilling holes in the boat. Oh, great. <laughs> Good thing you're above the water line. Yes, we're drilling holes in the boat. Uh-oh. This is for the solar outlet. I'll put the boat on it. Okay. I heard some debating going on up here. What are you discussing? They're trying to figure out where to put an AC outlet. That Scott won't yell at us for. <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan Bay is a basically a little floating town. They've got private residences that are floating and businesses that are floating and the docks for the boats that are floating. The only thing that's really on land is a few fuel tanks. So at Sullivan Bay, well, really at all of these marinas, they most of my, if not all of my beliefs, stay open year-round. But the only services they offer in the wintertime are fuel and liquor sales. So liquor is a big business for all these marinas. They also have a lot of loggers come in, especially all winter. That's, that's why they sell fuel and liquor in the wintertime, is for the loggers to come in and buy. All of the marinas in that area are worth seeing. They've all got their unique features. Sullivan Bay is completely floating. Uh, Lagoon Cove had a great happy hour every night. It was more of a dinner, potluck dinner, where the owners sat down with you and visited. And you got to meet all the other boaters. Lots of good tra hiking trails there as well. Echo Bay was very interesting. It's recently changed hands and still trying to get back on its feet. But uh, Billy Proctor is supposed to be a good draw for them. He's got a, muse a museum of stuff he's collected all his life. He's 88 years old and uh, been there basically his whole life. So he's got quite the little museum going. And I was able to sit down with him and actually try to talk to him. I think he was having a tired day that day because he wasn't overly talkative, but he was full of good information about the area and about the history. There were several warnings of fog, but this was the trip between Echo Bay and Blind Channel and it was socked in fog almost that whole leg of the trip and we couldn't most of the time we couldn't hardly see 100 feet in front of us we were going completely off of GPS and radar and it was very slow we were basically at idle we didn't go on any seas that I would consider really rough, especially for as large a boat as we was in. That boat took it just fine. Um, probably the roughest day, we had like 25 mile an hour winds, and it was on the Johnstone Strait, where the winds come right down the strait from the northwest. Nobody got seasick, including me. <laughs>
in fact, this was toward the end of the trip, and the one time I felt like I got kind of queasy was actually we were on land after being on the boat for so long. So kind of like water world when you get land sickness. <laughs> Before we left on this trip, we were, John was doing the planning mostly, but we were both looking at it. But he wanted to make sure his insurance, boat insurance is kind of weird in this way, but his insurance will only cover him to the 51st parallel line of latitude. So he couldn't go beyond that and be covered by insurance. But he wanted to go as far north as possible and still be covered. So there were maybe two, maybe three places we could have done that, and only one that we could really take the big boat. So we took the boat up to the 51st parallel and turned around right on it. So we were always covered by insurance. 